what up good people so we are doing some right triangle trigonometry today <laughs> like i always say get some notes make sure you're paying attention practice with me and let's go math with miss b math with miss b there's a thousand other places that you'd rather be but you're watching math with miss b Okay, so we have six major trig functions. I don't know if this, like, where's my mic? Six major trig functions. So you have your sine, you have your cosine, you have your tangent, and you have your cosecant, and you have your secant, and you have your cotangent. So these are all the abbreviations for these wonderful trig functions. So we don't use the long words. We use these three-letter abbreviations. So make sure that you... Um, familiarize yourself with them okay so when we're talking about trig functions there's a ratio so trig functions are ratios of sides in a right triangle okay so if I have a right triangle the sine is always going to be the ratio of the opposite and the hypotenuse so if we give this we look at these little triangles that we got going on right now right theta is the angle in question. So you always want to pay attention to where theta is located. And then we look at theta and then if it's finding the sign, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be like, okay, opposite over hypotenuse. Boom. If I'm looking at the cosine, I'm going to say adjacent over hypotenuse. Boom. If I'm looking at the tangent, I'm going to say opposite over adjacent. These are the three main big trig functions. And then to find the cosecant, secant, and cotangent, I'm just literally going to take the opposite, the reciprocal, excuse me. So the reciprocal would be instead of opposite over hypotenuse, it would be hypotenuse over opposite. Hypotenuse over adjacent and then adjacent over opposite, right? So again, looking at the triangles at the bottom, you can see where theta is and you can see where the opposite side is, where the adjacent side is, where the hypotenuse is, where the adjacent side is. So those are the things that you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to. Mm. Okay, what does this actually mean though? So there is a famous mnemonic device called SOHCAHTOA. So if you um, took some geometry once upon a time, or if you took trig once upon a time, you know about SOHCAHTOA. So SOHCAHTOA has three syllables. The first syllable is SO. S is sine, O and H is opposite over hypotenuse. CA is the second syllable, which is cosine, um, adjacent over hypotenuse. And then lastly is TOA. TOA is the last syllable that's tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. If you, this helps you memorize what the trig functions are. And then to find the other three trig functions for cosecant, you flip sine and get the reciprocal, blah, 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 reciprocal. For secant, you flip cosine, you get the reciprocal. And for tangent, you, you, for cotangent, you flip tangent and get the reciprocal. So um, trig values of an angle depend on the size of the angle not the size of the triangle, okay? So if we're dealing with right triangles and I have a triangle like this when I have theta and the tangent of theta is the opposite over adjacent, so three over two, right? As long as theta, let's say theta is 42 degrees, if even if the triangle is bigger, as long as theta is still 42 degrees, when I simplify that ratio, let's say I get six over four this time, when I simplify it, it's still gonna be three over two. So I could do another triangle, right? Which is a tiny triangle, okay? But theta is still 42 degrees, let's say. Um, when I simplify the ratio of opposite over adjacent, 1.5 over one, I'm still gonna get three over two. And then we we'll do a medium sized triangle, same thing. As long as theta is all the same, it doesn't matter the size of the triangle. When I reduce the ratio of opposite over adjacent, the trig functions to stay the same. So that it applies for sines, cosines, tangents, cosecants, cotangents, secants, all of those things. That is the purpose of right triangle trig, is that no matter the right triangle, the angles have the same ratios. So evaluating trig functions, find the value of the trig function. So I have a right triangle and I have two sides of a right triangle, but I want to find all six trig functions, right? So for me to be able to find all six trig functions of a right triangle, 
I'm gonna need the third side of that triangle. How do I find the third side of a right triangle? Pythagorean theorem. I hope you said that, right? So anytime I have a right triangle, I'm missing the third side, I should automatically be like, bet, let me use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so let's find the length of C. So using the Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So five squared plus 12 squared equals C squared. 5 squared is 25, uh, 12 squared is 144, C squared is, well, 25 plus 144 is 169. And then to find C, I got to take the square root of both sides. So 13 equals C. Now, if you're super duper duper smart, if you're a scholar, scholar, you should know that this is a Pythagorean triple. 5, 12, and 13 always go together. That was for free. Okay? So these are my trig functions. Oh, it already told you the sign. Anyway, these are my trig functions. I gave you the ratios in the table because I'm nice like that. I'm not going to do that forever, though. Okay? So I'm going to, my sign is opposite over hypotenuse. So that means if I'm looking at theta, I'm going to go to the side opposite of it. So that's the 5. The 5 is opposite from the little theta in the triangle, right? The little white theta. Opposite of it is 5. So 5 goes on top. And then slash H, hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is always the side across from the right angle. So the little purple square across from it is C. And C we figured out was 13. So 5 over 13. That's how I figured that out. So then we move on to cosine, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent means next to. That's a vocabulary word. Adjacent means next to. So I'm going to look at the little white theta in the triangle. And right next to it is the 12. Okay, and the hypotenuse is C. C is always the hypotenuse no matter what. It's right next to the theta 2, but because it's across from the right angle, it's not the adjacent side, it's the hypotenuse. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to be like, bet. 12 over 13, baby. Okay, so then my tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. So looking at the white theta in the triangle, what's opposite of it? Did you say five? Good job. And then adjacent, what's next to it? 12. So five over 12. So what becomes easy now is for my cosecant, what's gonna happen is my cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So instead of five over 13, guess what I'm gonna put? 13 over five. And then my secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So instead of 12 over 13, I'm gonna put 13 over 12. And then my cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So instead of 5 over 12, I'm going to put 12 over 5. You see? You see me? You see me? I hope you see me. All right. I got 10 minutes to finish this video. Let's see if we finish it <laughs> before the bell rings. All right. So this is my next one. You should pause the video and try this one on your own because it's almost exactly like the last one. So pause. Do, 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 do. that I'm a little bit reckless. Okay, first let's use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side of the triangle. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So 3 squared plus 4 squared, 9 plus 16, 25. Take the square root of both sides, C equals 5. Now for free, if you want to memorize, 3, 4, and 5 always go together. They're Pythagorean triple. So if I have A is 3, B is 4, C is always going to be 5. Um, in that order, preferably. Okay. So I have so, ka, to, wa. These are my six trig functions. These are my ratios. Ratios, ratios. Okay, so opposite over hypotenuse. Where did I write? Oh, three over five. Good. I can't see it. Like, it's over there on the, uh-huh. Anyway. Um, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. Look at the little white theta. What's right next to it? Adjacent is four. Hypotenuse is five. Four fifths. Um, tangent, opposite over adjacent. So opposite, three-fourths adjacent. Three over 
four, three over four. So now my cosecant, secant and cotangent are just reciprocals, right? So cosecant is gonna be, instead of three over five, we're gonna do five over three secant. Instead of four over five, we're gonna five over four. And cotangent is four over three. Ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. All right, I'm being obnoxious. <laughs> Okay, two more examples, a little bit harder. So this one is nice because they gave us all three sides of the triangle. I don't have to solve for the other side of the triangle. That's very nice of them. However, they gave me a little radical. You see that little radical? It's a little disrespectful, but it's fine. We're gonna get through it together. So opposite over hypotenuse, tell me what you're gonna get. Look at the theta, look at where the white theta is this time. It's not at the bottom, it's at the top. So what's the opposite? And what's the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is always across from the right angle, so what's the opposite? Two square root of two, good. What's the hypotenuse? Three. So my answer is two square root of two over three. Good job. What's my cosine? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent. What are we gonna get? Okay, good. One over three, very good. Okay, and then tangent, opposite over adjacent. Two square root of two over one, but two square root of two over one is just two square root of two. Okay, so now that we did those, now we get a little bit tricky because we're doing the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of, of sine is cosecant, right? So I'm gonna do, my cosecant is gonna be three over two square root of two. Now in math, we don't like radicals on the bottom of our denominator, so we have to do what's called rationalizing the denominator. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna multiply the top and the bottom by square root of two. That's how I rationalize a denominator, right? So on top, we're gonna get two square root, I mean three square root of two over two on the outside, square root of two times square root of two is two. So two times two on the bottom. So that's gonna be three square root of two over four. Ba -ba -da -ba! Sorry. <laughs> okay, for my secant, we're gonna flip over our, co our cosine, right? So that's gonna give me three because it was one over three, so three over one is just three. And then last but not least, we're gonna do our cotangent. Our cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so that is gonna be uh, what did I do? My cotangent is gonna be um, what's the ratio? Adjacent over opposite. So my adjacent side is going to be um, one. And then my, my opposite side is going to be two square root of two, right? So we should rationalize. So that multiply everything, the square root of two on top and square root of two on the bottom. And then that's going to go ahead and get me my lovely, beautiful answer. That is square root of two over four. Okay. Evaluating trig functions. Trig functions, trig functions. Okay, you should try the last one by yourself. Notice we have a side missing, but it's not the C side. Okay, so pause, try the video on your own. Okay, hopefully you pause the video. So when we do the Pythagorean theorem this time, we should have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. However, we're finding b. So one squared plus b squared equals five squared. So one squared is one, five squared is 25. Get b squared by itself. What am I gonna do to both sides of the equation? Did you say subtract one? Very good! So I'm gonna say b squared equals 24. So now to get b by itself, what should I do? Square root both sides, very good. So b equals the square root of 24. But we, we're scholars and we know that the square root of 24 simplified is two square root of six, period. 
Um, so that's what B equals. B equals 2 square root of 6. So now that I have all three sides of the triangle, I can go ahead and I can do my trig functions, right? Do my trig functions. Okay, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Locate the theta. Where is the theta? You see it? It's in the bottom. So where's the opposite side? 1. Where is the hypotenuse? 5. My sine is 1 over 5. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Locate the theta. Where's the adjacent side? It's B. So 2 square root of 6 over hypotenuse, which is 5. 2 square root of 6 over 5, 5, 5. Oh, man, I did the other one on accident too quick. Anyway, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that's going to be the opposite side, which is 1, over adjacent, which is 2 square root of 6. But I have to rationalize it, and when I rationalize it, I get square root of 6 over 12. I didn't do that step on the thing, though, so hopefully you know how to rationalize. Um, cosecant is 5, so hypotenuse, which is 5, over opposite, which is 1. 5 over 1 equals 5. Secant hypotenuse over adjacent so five all the time five over uh, adjacent which is two square root of six but we have to rationalize five over two square root of six and when I do that I get five square root of six over twelve and then last but not least I have adjacent which is 2 square root of 6 over opposite, which is 1. So 2 square root of 6 over 1 is just 2 square root of 6. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I know that was a lot. That's evaluating the trig functions of a right triangle in a nutshell. In a nutshell, in a nutshell. In a nutshell, in a nutshell. Okay, sorry. Go back to the video, see if you can do the examples on your own. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, be good. Make sure you take some notes. Make sure you share and tell your best friends, aunties, mamas, cousins, sister about the channel. Later. See you in the next one.